Kurt Volker is the former US ambassador to NATO. I asked him what advice he would give, if he was still at the State Department, to his seniors about how intensely they should express their frustrations. The way I would approach this is first to have a, a more clear-eyed view ourselves of what it is we're trying to do in the world. What are our policy priorities? And how do we pursue those uh, autonomously, that without making ourselves dependent upon Russia or others? What is the best way to organize and pursue our own objectives? That means dampening down the degree to which we express a sense of dependence or need that Russia do something for us. Uh, I think that would be terribly important. In that context, we also have to recognize whatever secrets Edward Snowden brought with him out of the United States, those are already gone. Uh, we're not going to be recovering anything there. We should, by all means, pursue every legal avenue, as we have done, to seek his arrest and extradition back to the United States to face justice. That's important for, as a signal to anyone else who might choose to steal secrets from the United States and just release them publicly. Uh, so we have to pursue that, but we have to distinguish that from the degree to which we portray a sense that we're dependent upon Russia for our own foreign policy. I don't know how au fait you are with spycraft and indeed how much you might be willing to go into the details of it, but am I right in thinking that the CIA will still be trying to follow his movements as far as possible while he's inside Russia? I think that's a fair assumption. I, you know, obviously, I, I can't say anything about espionage either, but I, I think that it's a fair assumption that we would want to know as much as we possibly can about what he's doing. Can I ask what you feel about what he did? Well, I think that he knew himself when he took the job, when he downloaded all that information, when he left the country, that he was uh, violating U.S. law. Uh, and he did it quite deliberately, and he's even admitted in his own statements that that is, in fact, what he's done. Uh, he needs to face prosecution and face justice in the United States. He did, at one point, early on, raise a valid issue worthy of consideration in the U.S., that there had not been sufficient public understanding and discussion of the role of the NSA in gathering metadata about American citizens' emails and phone calls. Uh, I think that... That is now a public discussion going on in the U.S. today. It's being debated in the Congress. I think that's healthy. That's a proper discussion to have. But the way he went about it was a gross violation of law that he knew himself was wrong. Away from his actions, can I ask whether you have any concerns about the apparent extent of surveillance by well, the National Security Agency and, and others in the, uh, in the U.S. at the moment? Well, my understanding is the way these things work is that People in the NSA collect whole troves of basic information. You know, who who did a person call and when? how long did they talk? And you're getting millions and millions and millions of such records. There's no possible way for anyone to scrutinize these in, in an individual way uh, to, you know, get insight into someone's personal life or their activities or phone calls. All you can do is scan for connections. The, when you then ascertain that there are some connections here that might be interesting, you still have to go to a court and get a more uh, directive authority to then be able to look specifically into individual records. So there is a protection in place as well. I think if Americans understood the protections in place, then you can have a reasonable debate and a fine-tuning of is it exactly right? Do we need a little bit more protections? But the basic idea that the government needs to be gathering information in order to promote national security, to thwart terrorist attacks, to understand who is operating in our own soil, those things are necessary.